So, yeah, we're back now, back in the building. Um, I haven't done an upload this week because I've had loads of stuff going on. I was at Goodwood yesterday or the day before yesterday to Goodwood. Today's been cancelled and I was going to do more filming there. But instead, I have to film something else for you. By the way, my garden is being re-turfed because um, the grass just refused to grow back. For everyone following me on a, on a TikTok, you would have known that the Urus wasn't here. The Urus is back now. Um, it had to go to get PPF'd. So um, yeah, I can finally give you like a proper walkthrough through the car and talk you through all the cool and nifty features that we have. I love the carbon hood and I love the depth of it. It just looks so cool. But yeah, um, Urus breakdown video, I think this will be. Also, my friend's Hurricane is here because he's getting gates at his house, you know, ish. He's been on the channel a few times and um, he, he hasn't got space to put this car on his drive at the moment. Also, he's just bought a 765 LT. So I said he can keep this car here for the time being. Um, these are the guys doing the, the lawn. But um, as you guys know, we have a Hurricane Storato coming soon. And um, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take delivery of the Storato, see how we like it for a month. And if not, we'll uh, trade it out for a Performance Spider probably, or Evo Spider. Um, but we'll see what happens. Also the 812 Can Turbo GT. This car's going by the way, but I'll speak about that later. But yes, like I was saying, the car went away to get PPF, which is paint protection film. It protects the car from things like stone chips, scratches, um, just general wear and tear on the paint. Because this paint is pearlescent color shifting paint, as you can see like there, um, you kind of have to take the extra step to protect it because repairing the paint and maintaining the paint can be quite difficult. The panoramic glass is here and I said to them, you know what, let's just make the roof black. So when they PPF'd it, my friends at Auto Forensics, they put black wrap on the roof just to, you know, tie it in a bit more. If I step back and you take a look, so it just makes more sense because you've got the carbon here and then it just goes black on the roof. It doesn't have the broken up purple, black, purple, black for all the panoramic roof section. I just think it looks tidier. I think it looks neater, but um, let me talk you through more of the PPF. Oh, my mother-in-law has just arrived. Do you want to say hello to YouTube? He's looking at the machine. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, Charles, I like your um, Aventador, Lamborghini Aventador. What color is that? So because they're um, redoing the lawn right now, I'm gonna film the inside. I'll come back to the outside later. So um, let's jump in and I'll show you around the inside of my Urus Performante. By the way, this is the key. They've updated it from the old Lamborghini keys um, that were just cut and paste copies of Audi keys. This is like the silhouette of an Audi key, but um, it's better than the old Lamborghini keys. So um, well done Lamborghini for putting in the effort there. It's actually very, very hot right now. So. Um, inside the car is burning up so i'm gonna start the ignition but um yeah let me show you um the startup of the urus performante so um you flip this little thing up here you press here like all lamborghinis the v8 fires into operation um, it is a volkswagen um, family derived v8 um, it was developed by porsche i believe for the panamera and the cayenne uh, music. How do you do the volume down again? Oh yes. Um, in this iteration, it makes 666 CV, which I believe is about 650 something horsepower. Don't quote me on that. Um, when I went on Car Wow, we dyno tested a um, Urus Performante against our Cayenne Turbo GT, and this car actually made significantly more power um, at the engine than they, they stated, which was pretty cool. I can't remember the exact figures, but I put it in right here. So there's the figures. The interior of this car is a wonderful place to be. Um, I went for Alcantara everywhere, apart from on the bolsters of the seats. It's leather, um, yellow um, contrast stitching, Alcantara on the roof. I also went for carbon fiber trim everywhere. Uh, you could get these in carbon, but it would have looked too carbony. I don't like carbon overload. It, it, it added for to me it can look tacky if it's not done properly so I decided just to leave that out so this all just ties in and it's just black plastic and I have no issues with that whatsoever I also went for the dark package so it gives you the dark metal dark Lamborghini logo dark door handles um, we have carbon fiber down here as well there's a lot of touch areas so it does get dusty it does get fingerprinty and then you've got the switch gear from Audi so um, your parking brake and whatnot to put the car in drive you pull on the right paddle just like you do in every other Lamborghini um, these switches here allow you to change your drive modes so I'll talk you through those later on and then I'll talk you through ego as well and all these buttons to reverse the car you pull up here and then you have your Prindom Prindom <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much the switch gear of the car 
I also spec the Bang & Olufsen sound system or Hullifsen, I can't remember how to pronounce it properly. Um, I spec that sound system. It is decent, it's not as good as the Burmeister in the Kyan Turbo GT, but it's good enough. Um, I also spec things like heads up display, wait, is that standard? I can't remember. Anyway, it's got heads up display, heated steering wheel, um, Alcantara touch points again, um, stitching on the rugs. Um, here is the, the, the glove box of the Urus Performante. It's not anything special, just the glove box. It's actually pretty tiny. Um, also, speaking of tiny, in here is ridiculously small. You can put your phone in there and that's about it. You can't really store anything else in there. So I also discovered this yesterday when I was got it back from um, the PPF place. You can um, do this and adjust your armrest, which I never realized. Inside the Urus Performante, it's wonderful. I went for double glazed glass and um, heat insulating glass as well. I've got a panoramic roof. Um, originally, I wanted a carbon fiber roof. Um, supply issues meant that you can't get the carbon fiber roof at the moment. So I went with panoramic and I'm actually happy. Um, and my son loves it when he's just riding around. He can look up and see the light compared to our Kyan Turbo GT, which is a carbon roof. So I think that's actually probably a better thing. Um, also wanted to get the rear seat entertainment, but again, supply issues issues, supply chain issues, um, a semiconductor shortage meant that we couldn't get the um, rear seat entertainment and TV tune unfortunately. My issues with the car actually start in the interior. Um, one thing that is not very good is that adults kind of hit the roof in the back because the roof is low, so low slung, um, your head actually touches the roof. Um, let me actually give you an example. So I actually have a short torso and long legs. I'm six foot, so um, I can actually survive in the back. But if you have a longer torso than me, if you go over bumps, your head will hit the roof. It's not a very pleasant um, roof line. It's not very um, sensible for anyone of like average height, I would say. If you're a shorter person, it makes sense. If you've got kids, they'll be absolutely fine. But anyone over like five, seven, um, with a long torso will um, have issues here I think um, my sister-in-law rode in the back when my wife was driving and they went over speed bumps and her head was touching the roof and she's actually like five seven um, but she obviously she's got a longer torso than me so um, yeah that's something to look out for if you plan on carrying tall children or adults in the back of the car also um, the car is incredibly stiffly sprung so that means when you go over bumps it flipping shudders a lot um especially compared to the current turbo gt which has air suspension on this car they decide to go for steel springs and active dampers um i understand it in theory but at the same time it makes no sense i think they did it for the weight savings that's what they're marketing it as and for driving feel but it feels like more they did it to save money because it would have been a cheaper setup to do and then they can charge people more um i think they should have gone to air suspension the fastest um suv around the nurburgring is the Kyan Turbo GT that has air suspension. It works perfectly well. It's soft over um, bumps, well, soft as possible. And then it's firm when you need it to be firm. I like it. So like I was saying here, this controls your drive mode. It's called the Anima switch. Um, when you scroll through like this, you can shift from Strada. So Strada is street, is Italian for street, and that makes the steering wheel as soft as possible, suspension as soft as possible, and the engine as laid back as possible. And it also activates things like um, cylinder deactivation, as well as um, auto start stop. When you change it down to sport, you hear the tone of the engine changes because the exhaust flaps open a little bit. It turns off all your assistance systems, stiffens up the steering wheel, stiffens up the suspension. You go down to Corsa, which is race mode basically. Again, the idle increases. The car gets enormously loud. Um, it also has a lot more snaps and crackles and pops, <laughs> like the serial. sounds great again it turns off all of your um, assistance systems and then you have ready mode which kind of makes a car into a rear wheel drive beast it makes a car more eager to um, kick out the back if you fire it into ego mode here though you can have the best of all worlds so I have it in sports engine mode set up um, strada steering and strada suspension to keep it comfortable but keep the um, engine sounding nice I would have put the engine in Corsa in ego mode but the reason I haven't done that is that Corsa idles so high um, yeah fun fact um, before you have to like keep firing at this to get into different modes if you just hold this it'll go back to strada all in all I'm very happy with the interior of the Urus I think it is beautiful um, I think it gives that aggressive Lamborghini feel that you're used to if you've owned other Lamborghinis which is nice I feel like it's very Audi ish there's some Audi elements that I'm not a fan of and what what is this down here is this stained already or oil I think that's oil and anyway, for example this um, infotainment console I believe is out of a Seat um, I think it's also in a few golfs um, with the 
symbols on the side which i mean when you're paying almost three hundred thousand pounds for a car um it's not something you necessarily want also the um switch are from um, Audi and Seat, I believe. This is different, although this system is just a reskin version of the Audi system. It's also quite difficult to use this infotainment system because it's like screens are hidden in screens. AC settings, your massage key settings, everything's like really deep in there, um, which can be frustrating, especially when you're driving along and when you're trying to get used to the car. Your climate stuff is down here. Again, touchscreen. It does work. It is haptic, although I turned off the haptic parts just because I feel like it's more intuitive because it makes it like a phone when you touch and things happen instead of you having to push hard. I mean, it, it's good, it's not the most amazing system, but it does work. And then you have this volume system now, which is nice that the volume's on a knob. It's surprisingly well made. Uh, the, I know that sounds a bit off, but Italian cars don't tend to be the most like well put together, but this is beautiful. It just feels like a German car inside. And, and it's funny that it feels like a German car. You almost say that it's like an Audi. Anyway, anyway, let me turn off the car and then um, take you around the outside. I think I have a few moments of time. Sorry that this video is a bit rushed. I um, was supposed to film something completely different and I ended up filming this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make the most of it. I'll go more in depth later on. I'll do a driving video as well. I haven't got the time today, unfortunately. So if I pop the handle, I like the handles in here. They're, it's funny, um, they're not actually connected. I believe they're electronic because there's like no feedback there. Also, um, I expect soft close doors that sometimes close softly and so oh yeah and also if you get a lamborghini this year you get this 60th anniversary plaque in the back which is um tinted away and you can tell that i've barely used the car because all the plastic is still on the um, protective sections but yes anyway across the outside of the car let me talk you through what i have here uh, the carbon bonnet a lot of people can't get this at the moment because of supply issues i was very lucky to get one um you've got this carbon um, vents that really signify performante and um, the urus s has them as well but um in the performante they're normally coupled with the carbon hood but i guess if you don't have the carbon hood and you just have that it'll just look like a urus s which is a shame but anyway um, i've also got the carbon down here um that is the camera for the adaptive cruise system again the car's fully ppf'd it's got the adaptive headlights um 22 inch diamond cut wheels i could have gone all black i just feel like this looks more interesting than all black rims uh black rims are kind of played out at the moment so i wanted something a little bit different carbon side sills um all across the car you've got this cool performante logo so this car actually runs on a special version of pirelli p0s um i know if you get the smaller rims you can get it with like a special trofeo tire which doesn't make sense to me i think it's trofeo or corsa but this used a special p0s fun fact it's like a thousand pounds per tire um i I also have in here a in here a carbon fiber um fuel filler cap which is pretty cool it, it looks nice um pointless if you ask me um we also have the carbon fiber diffuser we have the carbon fiber logo the spoiler which is a um Urus performante thing and these like wings on the side which is also a performante thing the car is very similar in shape to the can turbo gt they do share a chassis do share an engine diff slightly different components slightly different setup but it's it's gorgeous i think it's an amazing car and you've got that Krapovich exhaust which sounds great too um this paint is called viola mithris i think it was like a sixteen thousand pound extra i'm very happy with it though because it pops especially in the sunlight but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is my Urus Performante. Um, the weather's terrible today. I would take it out for a drive, but I've got other things that I have to do. I was supposed to take it to Goodwood at some point over this weekend, but because Goodwood was cancelled today, tomorrow I might take it to Goodwood or I might take the SF90 or the 812, just depending on mood and depending on how I feel. Um, my friend's Performante looks really cool. I do miss my Performante. I used to have a white one and it meant the world to me. Um, the Cayenne Turbo GT is being sold. I don't see the point of having two of literally the same car. They are the same car. This one is just looks cooler um, and holds its value significantly better. <laughs> and it's purple um and so i'm gonna get rid of this sending it back to porsche they'll sail or return it for me which is where they sell a car on your behalf and then they take a little commission out of it um but yeah that is the earth performance if there's anything you guys want to know let me know i'll do a full review um of the car later on but um yeah here it is my first thoughts are it's a wonderful car it handles well it drives well it's way too firm um and that's probably my only issue. It's just way too firm for an SUV. It doesn't really make sense. The Cayenne Turbo GT, again, I keep going back to it because it's a direct comparison, a direct competitor. It's way softer when you want it to be soft. Um, I, I just don't see why the car has to be compromised. It's too firm. Even my SF90 
deals with like um, bump rebound um, way better than the Urus Performante, which is a ridiculous thing to say. Um, obviously, the Urus Performante is still more comfortable because the suspension travels more, but um, the SF90 dampers just deal and dial out bumps way more. Um, that's something they can change in the future if they do another performance down the line i don't know if they will um but yeah the car's amazing i'm keeping this one this is going this will be my daily i was actually looking for a daily this car wasn't supposed to arrive until like december i think but it came early which is a blessing and a curse at the same time because i have way too many cars in my drive this isn't even all of them i've got the SEJ and the sf90 in the garage i've got another car coming and another car coming and another car coming literally three cars coming all in like the next two weeks but um yeah this is the drive at the moment keeping this getting rid of this um the 812 i haven't driven it in ages because i keep driving the sf90 i don't know if i'll keep it just because i haven't been driving it that much so um sound off in the comments what you think i should do but yeah thanks for watching um if there's anything else i think of i'll put it in the next video i'll do a proper review later on but yes here is my urus performante <laughs>